Today we're going to talk about predictability of the climate, certainties and questions that we still have about the subject. The graph you're looking at shows you the uh, evolution of global temperatures during the 20th century, starting in 1900 until the end of the current century, 2100. The various curves of different colors correspond to different scenarios uh, of greenhouse effect gases increases. And what I find remarkable here is that temperatures will be lower if we behave uh, reasonably, if we follow the lowest curve, but the temperatures will increase substantially, and this will be detrimental for the planet if we continue behaving as we do today. And this would be the red curve. Now, today, what I would like to say is that for each of these curves, you see on the right-hand side of the graph, there are columns uh, which uh, tell you about the different climatic models that were used for the fourth IPCC report, the one published in 2007. And the, the uh, error bars correspond to several degrees of global temperature, and they have a huge impact on the behavior we will need to adopt to adapt to the changes and mitigate the changes. I'm going to tell you about the reasons why these results are so difficult to uh, cope with. We will talk about uh, model sensitivity and natural variability, also called climate internal variability. The next graph, the one you're looking at now, corresponds to the last IPCC report published in September 2013. Essentially, we see that there still are differences between the various uh, behavior patterns for humankind, red or blue, except that the different behaviors found an expression in the uh, way the report was uh, organized. It no longer refers to scenarios, but rather representative profiles, evolution in the concentration of greenhouse uh, effect gases, for instance. Still, we still have error bars on the right-hand side of the graph. So this report reinforces the certainty that the temperature, the global temperature will increase, but there are still questions on what the temperature is going to be like at the end of the century. The uncertainties increase with the longer predictions, the, the, the further away we try to uh, predict and the more uncertain we are. The report also looks at more regional quantities such as the size and the extent of the Arctic ice cap as is shown on the bottom graph. This is directly impacted by greenhouse effect gases directly or indirectly by uh, the temperature shown in the top graph. Which brings me to the source, the origin of the effects that lead to these uh, uncertainties and the questions being raised. The climate system as you can see, is very complex. There are many subsystems. There are arrows corresponding to the interaction between the systems. And the graph is nonlinear. If you hit twice harder, the effect will be not just twice harder. If you punch somebody the first time, that person may stagger. And the second time, the person will fall to the ground. It's the same here. The subsystems are not identical molecules of a gas. Each gas has its own properties. The atmosphere, the ocean, the vegetation on the uh, Earth's surface, the plankton in the ocean water. And on top of this, we see multiple scales going from a tornado, dozens of meters, to uh, events that will go over the size of a single continent.
Now, what we're looking at is a slightly idealized version of the first two graphs. On the uh, horizontal axis, we have time between 1,900 and 2,000, and the red line, the red arrow, is a hypothetical effect of greenhouse effect gases, particularly CO2, because we know that for an exponential growth of CO2 concentrations, there will be a linear increase in global temperatures. Now, what we have observed is the black line. The black line is not linear, and it's not even monotonous. It doesn't climb steadily, it has ups and downs, and the ups and the downs can last for years or even decades. We see, therefore, an effect which is independent from, from forcing, from natural variability of climatic systems, modified by the greenhouse effect gas forcing, obviously, in aerosols, which are not talking about but are still there. And the natural variability does not simply vanish in air. And life would be much easier if the climatic system simply followed what is being imposed by forcing, except it's not the way things are going. Now we're going to look at the difference between a forcing-based behavior on a balanced system on the left-hand side and a, a system which is uh, sensitivity with a system which is out of balance on the right-hand side. Now, if the climatic system were balanced and if we increased CO2 by one step, one notch, the temperature in a balanced and linear system would simply follow the continuous curve. The CO2 is in dotted lines and the temperature is the straight line. So it will move from one step to the next step, whereas on the right-hand side, in the system which is out of balance, we see that the climatic system would uh, fluctuate. This is what we see in the austral oscillation system. And if this were the case, one jump in the CO2, the CO2 going up one notch, would not result in a change in the temperature of one notch, but rather an amplified oscillation, not only an increase in the frequency, but also in the phase of the oscillation. So what do we know? Well, that obviously temperatures are rising, that we are to blame for it, we're contributing to it, both with the greenhouse effect gases uh, and uh, aerosol values, and that we need to act based on the best available information. What do we not know so well? how much the temperatures will increase by the end of the century and how far we are contributing to this temperature increase versus other climatic effects. So how does it really work? The atmosphere, the oceans, we have uh, understood the atmosphere and the oceans better than other physical data because we know the atmosphere, we live in the atmospheres, and we don't live in a simple tube or pipeline with an industrial outflow. So how does natural variability interact with anthropic forcing? What it boils down to is that, and what really matters for you, dear friends, is what can we do? Well, we can try and understand better the climatic system and its forcing parameters. The better we understand, the better, the easiest it will be to uh, predict the climate evolution. We will then be able to adjust to this evolution and we will be able to mitigate the changes.